Hey friend, Kevin Keen here with Sounds to Live By. Today we are talking about our responsibility as songwriters. Now a lot of us got into this field, this craft, because it was selfish, to be honest. It was for me. I want to write music, I want to play music because it makes me feel better. I can express myself and it gives me some sense of belonging and identity. Maybe that wasn't the case for you, and if not, you are an admirable person. However, for some of us, that was the case. But the greatest way we can use our gift is to bless others. I wanna make a statement, and some people may not agree with me on this. I believe it is important for us to authentically express ourselves, and if we're going through hard times, that songwriting is a great way to get through them. If you haven't seen my video on self-discovery through songwriting, you can watch that. But it it's important that we use our gift for ourselves. I'm not saying that we should ignore that or avoid that. However, we can get so about our process that we cannot consider the pain it might be causing other people. This comes out in really dark songs, really negative. I mean, there's some songs that are just twisted. I personally don't believe that when it comes to art that all bets are off and you can just say whatever you want, paint whatever you want, display whatever you want. There is an order to the chaos. If you want to express something dark in something painful, there's an orderly way to present it where the person ends up realizing something and maybe it is a heavy weighty thing maybe you're bringing awareness to something but just leaving them with a dark depressed feeling after hearing your song should never be the goal we should never intentionally harm people and i know no one listening to this does but that's where our responsibility comes in we have a responsibility as songwriters to understand the impact our song is going to have on the listener. So we're going to talk about why we write. Some of this material is from my online songwriting course. We're going to go through some of this today so you get a little sneak peek into some of the things we talk about in the two-pillar approach to songwriting. But what you're going to do is identify your why. We all have a why as a songwriter. We have to know why we do what we do when we get hit with writer's block when we face things that try to keep us from writing uh steven pressfield calls it resistance all, all artists have resistance to really become great and so when we face those things if we know our why we can press through them so these are three things i've found under why we write for ourselves and you can identify this for yourself. These are just some things I've found. But one, we write to discover who we are. We use songwriting to search deep inside, and we draw out those things that are buried under layers and layers of life. And there's just something about music and songwriting that helps us to process, discover those things, bring them out, and look at them in the light. The second thing we do is process who we are. So we discover who we are, then we process who we are through song. And Bob Dylan has a quote. Um, I'm going to read it real fast. It says, It's only natural to pattern yourself after someone, but you can't just copy someone. If you like someone's work, the important thing is to be exposed to everything that person has been exposed to. So what Mr. Dylan is saying is, You can't be me. You can't write like me unless you've walked a mile in my shoes. So there's nobody that can write like you. And your success is determined by your ability to discover who you are and then process who you are. And your songwriting persona is going to be birthed out of that process. So we discover who we are, we process who we are, but then we express who we are. So when we become identified with who we are as a songwriter, those three areas will begin to be the mark that identifies you separately from someone else. If you're just trying to copy someone else's sound, you're never going to truly have your own identity as a songwriter. So, we write for ourselves, that's that's our first why, to discover, process, and express who we are. But that's only the initial point so that we can get to these other two areas. Not downplaying that, that's hugely valuable. Again, see my video on self-discovery through songwriting. And then we move to the second area, and that's writing for others. Now, when we write for others, we are focused on 
taking what we've learned, what we've processed, what we've discovered, and sharing that with the ones we love. Um, this can be as simple as your family, your friends, your church, your songwriting community, whatever it is. You're sharing music and songs with them because you love them and you want to bless them with your gift. That's a very honorable and noble way to use what you've been given. The second thing you can do when writing for others is give them a voice. Some people don't have the ability to put into words like you do things of great importance. They're feeling really deep emotional things and they don't know how to put words to it. That's that's why you'll hear someone hear a great song and they'll say, oh man, that just put language to what I've been thinking that I couldn't quite say. That's because you have a gift to do that. You, you need to do that because you may unlock someone's thoughts and the mystery that's been rolling around in their head for decades and they hear your song, they're like, that makes sense. I understand now what I've been thinking. So we can give them a voice. Just a simple example of this. I wrote a song for my grandmother last Christmas, and I love my grandmother. She's the sweetest woman, but she's not going to speak very highly of herself all the time. And so I wrote a song giving her a voice. I said the things that I believed about her that I believe she should be saying about herself so that she can hear it and that she can then live out what I've sung over her. And so we give people a voice, we give them hope, and then we give them a message. We give them an anthem to live by. Those are the three areas when we write for others. Then we move into, it's kind of like, think of this as these concentric circles that just keep like a bullseye. So the center of the bullseye would be writing for you, for discovering who you are and your identity as a songwriter and as a person. And then outside of that, a ring out of that is writing for those close to you, your community, you know, writing for the people that you know, writing songs about the people you know, or experiences they've had, writing for others. And then the next ring out from that, big impact is writing for the world at large. Now, when we write for the world at large, then we are doing a couple things. One, we're fostering unity between people of all races, backgrounds, religions. We're bringing people together in order to be able to speak the same language. Music is a universal language. Right now we have in Northwest Arkansas, a regional worship collaboration called Diamonds that we put together. It's like 10 or 12 different churches, a bunch of different songwriters, worship leaders, and we're working on an EP together that we will release this summer that's going to be a collective voice of the Church of Northwest Arkansas. These are people from different denominations and different theologies that are coming together and writing music together. A running theme of that project has been two people will argue theology but sing the same song. There's something about music. It just brings people together. So when you write for the world at large, you foster unity. Another thing you can do is bring awareness. I'm going to read this. This is from um, a website on the civil rights movement. Um, but it says, music played a vital role in the civil rights movement. Freedom songs drew from spirituals, gospel, rhythm and blues, football chants, blues, and calypso, and were sung by protesters, activists, civil rights leaders, and music legends to spread the message of the movement. Dr. Martin Luther King called these songs the soul of the movement. Civil rights activists sing the freedom songs today for the same reason the slaves sang them, because we too are in bondage and the songs add hope to our determination that we shall overcome. Black and white together, we shall overcome someday. I want you to really key in on the phrase that he said that the songs that were written during that time were the soul of the movement. You have the ability to write songs that are the soul of a movement, and you don't need to take that lightly. I'm going to do a video soon on how your songwriting is a matter of life and death, and it's important that you know that. So the third thing and final thing we're writing for the world at large is that our music can bring change. Our songs can bring change. So once you bring awareness to something, change is the result of the listener then taking and putting into action what is suggested. So quick review. The reason that we need to be responsible as songwriters, why we can't just throw any song out into the world 
we have to know the impact that we're going to have on people is important. We, knowing that we have a responsibility with how our art affects the world is important. So quick review, why we write. One, to discover, process, and express who we are. Then, to write for others, to give them a voice, to give them hope, to give them a message to move forward. And then for the world at large, to foster unity, to be the voice and the soul of a movement, to bring awareness, and then to ultimately see change take place because of the music we've written. There's several times where I've heard of terrible things in our community, where I live, in our state, and in our nation, and the thing that resounds in my spirit that I believe is the voice of God telling me is write the songs that will change the world. Not that will be number one on hit radio and make me a lot of money. Write the songs that are going to change the hearts and minds of people, and that's what we can do as songwriters. So comment below. Let me know what you believe the big why is for you. Why do you write? Do you agree with me? Do you think we're responsible for how our art affects the world? Or do you think it doesn't matter, write a really dark, painful song, and if it hurts people, not my responsibility. I want to know if that's what you think too. Would love to get a dialogue going. But I believe we're responsible. I believe we can affect the world for good. And I believe that should be our focus. Now, if you want a resource from me, I have a PDF guide I've put together called the Killer Melody Checklist. And this is a five-point guide that kind of walks you through how to match your melody up against these five areas and see if it's ready to go out into the world, to see if it's as good as it can possibly be. Um, If you want that, you can go to the link below or you can simply go to soundstoliveby.com slash checklist and you can download that for free. My gift to you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.